Good evening. If there's one word that describes Ken Lingan, it would be intensity. In fact, um, we used to have a nickname for him in Unilever. It was Ken Tensity. I don't know if he has carried that name with him in Google, but anyone who has met Ken would notice the intensity he applies to everything. It's truly infectious. So today, I hope I can do intense justice to introducing an intense leader, mentor, and friend. I first worked with Ken in 2005 when he was the regional brand director for our deodorants business in Asia, and I was his brand manager. We worked together for five years until he became the marketing director for Unilever in Gulf, where he was based in the Middle East. When he came back as vice president for DEOS in Asia, I worked with him again, this time as global brand director for Dove. And when he became country head of Google in the Philippines, we again worked closely on some projects for the Philippine business. That's almost 15 years of crisscrossing careers. And in between, we both got married, became godparents of each other's kids, moved roles and companies, gained a bit of weight, lost a bit of hair, <laughs> yet a lot of hair in the case of Ken, <laughs> sabi niya. <laughs> and, uh, and yet through it all, managed to become friends. And through those 15 years, I got to know Ken very well. And for me, there are three things that mark Ken as a mentor and as a leader. Three Ps. So kung sa marketing may six Ps, si Ken may three Ps. Passion, people, and purpose. So I will talk about those three Ps today. First, passion. Ken doesn't shy away from the toughest challenges and the most audacious goals. He faces them with intense passion. Back in 2007, launching a deodorant brand in China, was like selling meat to vegetarians. Yet, he did it. In 2010, he was in Dubai, right smack in the middle of Arab Spring. Yet, the economic turmoil did not stop him from growing the business and making an impact. For Ken, walang imposible. In 2014, when he took the reins of Google, he built a team and a business from the ground up leading the charge of digital transformation in the Philippines. And as president of IMAP, his legacy was bringing everyone together across disciplines, industries, and companies to make that transformation a reality. Ken's passion is not just an emotion, but an intensity that makes an impact. The first P, passion. The second P is people. So I will always be grateful to Ken um, for being my boss throughout my two pregnancies. As a working mom who is passionate about work and passionate about motherhood, I could not have asked for a better boss. Together with Gina, yet another MMMA awardee, Ken created an environment where I could bring my best self to work. We both set high standards for what we wanted to accomplish together. Yet, we also valued our family life as a priority because Ken is a family man. So for me, whether it was having to be in bed rest for some part of my pregnancy, to moving to a local role that required less frequent travel, to being absent to a meeting so that I can attend my daughter's PTC, I never thought twice about asking Ken because I knew that we had the same values. For this, I am grateful, and because of this, I was able to thrive. But my story as a working mom is just one small of example of Ken's heart for people. Let me tell you another one. In 2012, the regional teams in Unilever had to go through a restructuring. You can imagine it was a time of great uncertainty for many, even the most senior leaders in the company. 
For some, the outcome of that restructuring could be painful. And I suppose the instinctive reaction of most leaders would be self-preservation. But Ken did the opposite. Ken, put, Ken took care of his people first before he took care of himself. He made sure everyone had a role. I remember he was actively lobbying to ensure everyone had a landing spot. And he stayed to the very end to ensure that everyone was taken care of. It was a leadership crucible moment. And Ken showed servant leadership, putting others ahead of himself. To me, that is a true man for others. And that is probably why Ken is so blessed today. The second P, people. The third P is purpose. The reason why Ken is probably so intense is be because he acts with purpose. He lives deliberately. It's not just about hitting this year's target or gaining X points of market share or achieving 10X growth, as they say in Google. It is about turning seeds into forests, making a difference, and leaving a legacy. For Ken, launching Rixona Dio Lotion wasn't just about having a low price pack. For him, it was about giving poor consumers access to hygiene and confidence. As we say, same party, smaller plate, right, Jonah? For Ken, leading a team wasn't just about delivering results together. For him, it was developing Pinoy talent and some of that talent you see here with us today. For Ken, leading Google wasn't just about being country head of a big company. It was about giving Filipinos access and connectivity. He really cares about the country. So sometimes, we joke Ken, sabi namin, tumakbo na lang siya. He should go into politics. And his tagline will be, vote for Ken Mr. Goggle Lingan. Libreng internet para sa lahat, o, di ba? Pwede. But, but seriously, Ken's sense of purpose is truly inspiring, and I believe he is really making a difference to the country that he so loves. Three Ps, passion, people, and purpose. This is what makes Ken intense. This is what defines Kentensity. And today, I am extremely proud to introduce him as an MMMA awardee, an outstanding leader, mentor, and friend, Mr. Ken Lingan. Our next Man Smith Market Masters Awards winner is Mr. Kenneth Lingan, country head of Google Philippines. Wow, thank you, Mian, for that amazing, amazing introduction. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, and thank you, Man Smith, uh, for the recognition. I also want to give a huge congratulations to my fellow awardees, uh, Dennis, uh, Rosa, and Robert. Uh, it's really indeed an honor to be sharing the stage with you tonight. Um, this award means a lot to me, and I think it's even more special to receive this award with people who have played a significant role uh, in my life and also in my marketing career. So first, I want to thank my family, Lisa. Uh, thank you for being a pillar of strength. Uh, life has indeed been much richer, and much more beautiful because of you. Thank you. Uh, to my children, Sophia, Amara, and Anton, thank you for always inspiring me to work hard and uh, to always aim to be a better person every single day. To my parents, thank you for working hard and all the guidance 
for giving me all the opportunities to, to fulfill or to reach my full potential. To the rest of my family, my siblings, to mama, um, thank you for all the love and the support. I also want to thank my marketing mentors. Um, we have one here also tonight, and who I'm deeply, really, really grateful. Uh, I want to call out one of my first mentors, Mr. Mars Aaron. Mr. Mars, he taught me all about streets marketing. Uh, Joe and Chiki, if I could suggest, I know there's a YMMA, there's also MMA. Uh, we could also have an award for the mentors of the market masters. We could call it Grand Market Masters, right? <laughs> so Mars, maraming salamat. Lastly, I want to recognize my colleagues and also my mentees. Uh, they're here tonight. Some of them are here tonight. Jonah, Gara, Neil, uh, and of course, Mian. Uh, it's really a gift to work with such amazing talent. And, and I think I, I, I really feel so proud seeing all of you succeed and grow. So six years ago, I went to our leadership course uh, in, in, in the past employer, Unilever, that made a significant impact on my life. The course was based on a book written by Bill George, and the book was called True North. It was about the importance of knowing one's leadership purpose. And my biggest learning from that course was that if you want to discover your leadership purpose, you don't look forward or you don't look to the future, but rather you look in your past and you look for clues. And you would find clues perhaps in experiences or crucible stories that have defined you, or it could be things that you enjoy or are deeply passionate about. So when I started to reflect about my own experiences, I've always found great fulfillment on two things. First, it was about growing brands and businesses, and second, it was about growing people. Another influence on my leadership purpose is my interest in farming. You know, I've always wanted to be a farmer, right? A lot of people call me Farmer Ken. But what has really enamored me to farming is the experience of seeing something so small and eventually becoming something so big and beautiful. So I've defined my leadership purpose as nurturing the seeds that build towering forests. And tonight, I would like to share with you two stories that have challenged that leadership purpose. Back in 2001, I was the brand manager of Rexona. It was the number one deodorant brand, but it was the market leader in a very small category. We wanted to grow the brand by growing the category penetration, and at that time, there were only 45% of consumers who were using a deodorant. Majority were using a proxy product called Tawas. We were very excited about the opportunity because you could really smell the opportunity. <laughs> the biggest barrier uh, to adoption was price. At that time, the cheapest pack of a deodorant was 50 pesos, and uh, we, we, it's definitely much more expensive than a pack of Tawas. So we launched a product called Rexona Mini Stick, which was priced at just 17 pesos. And to make the business case work, we had to design a new pack, and we had to build a new factory from the ground up. Uh, we launched with a lot of fanfare, and we even have a very cute tagline. So we call it Rexona Mini Stick, so liit, sulit. Right. Six weeks into the launch, the supply chain director called me to invite the whole project team for a factory visit. So we're all excited. And when we arrived at the plant in Cavite, I was impressed by the size of our factory. It was a huge operation. But there was one problem. The factory was not running because of high inventory and we were only hitting a fraction of our forecast. I had to face the factory owners and hear from them how losses have piled up due to the low sales, and they were even contemplating scaling down the operation. I came out of that visit with a burning desire to make the launch work. So we reviewed our past researches to understand the issue better. And while there was healthy awareness of our new pack, it was not enough to drive trial. For Tawas users, the value equation was not compelling enough because for them, it's almost as good as their current product that they're using. So we focus all our efforts on educating and dramatizing the performance superiority of Rexona. And we did that by launching a testimonial campaign featuring ex Tawas users. Shortly after the launch, sales run rates tripled and we eventually exceeded our original forecast. Our success in the Philippines got other countries interested so much so that Rexona Menistic was eventually exported to more than 10 countries. We even won the Chairman's Path to Growth Awards, which was a global award at the time. 
And there were many lessons from this experience, but my big lesson was that the importance of understanding and diagnosing the problem correctly. In marketing, we should not be afraid to challenge the challenge. Oftentimes, we fail not because we had the wrong solution, but because we did not define or understand the problem properly. The second story happened during my stint as marketing director in the Middle East. My decision to take on this role was a complete leap of faith. I didn't know the region, the language, the culture, and I was not familiar with the categories that I will be handling. When I arrived in late 2009, the region has been riding the tailwind of economic boom due to high oil prices. Business has been growing healthily, but I had concerns on how the business was run. We were a consumer goods business, but our business was not consumer-centric at all. It was more of a trade promotion-led business. When market share was down, or when we were behind targets, the first port of call was to launch a twin pack 20% off or a trade deal for wholesalers. There was hardly any marketing in the marketing team. On the surface, the business is humming, but deep inside, our business is fragile and under threat. I know we had to change, but I found it challenging to drive change when business is doing well. By the middle of 2010, the great financial crisis had finally caught up in the region. There was a massive exodus of foreign workers and consumer confidence was at an all-time low. The business tank and we lost market share in majority of our categories. The recession has greatly exposed our weaknesses as a business and as Warren Buffett would say, only when the tide goes out do you discover those who's been swimming naked. Personally, it was a very humbling experience. Our poor business performance made me doubt my own capability to lead the team and lead the business. I couldn't change the past, but I have control in the future and how we would respond to the challenge. I used the business crisis as, an opera, as a burning platform to drive change in the entire organization. We made a fundamental shift from being sales-led to marketing-led. I also made use of the crisis to make changes in my team. I revamped all my leads and made bets to groom young but promising talent who didn't have the baggage of the past. Our commitment to being consumer-centric has helped us unlock opportunities that we wouldn't have pursued in the past. We made a big push to reach Asian consumers, which was 35% of the population of the Middle East. One example was we launched Cream Silk in the Middle East, and it became the number one hair conditioner in that region. We shifted the investment from trade to consumer. We push our agency partners to build brilliant ideas that build brands. We turn around the business and set it up for several years of strong growth. The team took pride in our marketing campaigns and we also started winning industry awards. What's even more heartening is that the young team that I had then are now senior marketeers in Unilever and in other organizations. My big learning from this experience is there's absolutely no shortcuts for sustained success. It's all about doing the right things and doing things right all the time. The experience also taught me that there's always a silver lining in every failure. Ram Emanuel, who's the former mayor of Chicago, once said, never let a serious crisis go to waste. The crisis became the perfect opportunity to reset and build the right foundation for the business. As I look back at my career, I realize that no one would remember how much you've grown the business or how high your market share was. But what people would remember is how you made them feel and how you made an impact on them. This Market Masters Award is a reminder of what is truly important and an inspiration to live my leadership purpose every single day. Maraming salamat. God bless. Mm -hmm.